sorry about that, Tokoyami. At least she apologizes for it. At least see recovery girl and get some medicine for your throat. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. It's just wrong. Oh no, Mo was taking it really hard. What inefficient beings. <laughs> this robot <laughs> just keeps taking these shots at humanity. The third battle. <laughs> oh no, don't give this guy power. Don't give this guy any fuel. Class B is certain to come out on top! No, that's your last victory. I don't know why he talks like that when he knows she's gonna smack him. <laughs> and some, some great commentary from Uraka. I mean, putting petty rivalries and near-death mushroom experiences aside, this is obviously great for, for everyone involved. I mean, not only is there the very obvious practicing of their quirks, but also I feel like this is gonna be a bonding experience for the two classes. The school motto is plus ultra, but I feel like another one could be real recognizes real. You know, you can't be in this school or be in these top classes without being just excellent and wanting excellence and being impressed with people's abilities, you know what I mean? These are all fans of heroes and they're all heroes. So they're all fans of each other in a way. Okidashi, I didn't know you could make something so big. My throat gets scratchy when I do, but I'm trying to learn to power through it. I wonder what his room is like. You know, you've grown a ton too, Deku. <laughs> no this complimenting. I'm not talking about my height! I'm waiting for the Mineta growth. I am here without starting. <laughs> That's a great entrance. Of course you've got the deets on Midoriya. No, I just heard it. Just That's accept it. Else just embrace it. it. And she was never seen again. Have you sensed anything strange in your quirk since that night? No. Oh, oh right. There's like bigger things happening. Forgot. Things could get weird. After all, the vestiges of One for All did first appear to you during a match against Young Shinzo. Yeah, there, there's some connection growing here, but what is it exactly? You asked me to keep your relationship a secret, but you're always sneaking around like this. Everyone knows, yeah. Did something happen? And don't lie. This is like unusually expressive for Bakugo. You can let him know, you can trust him. I've gotten stronger since the last time we fought, so you better be keeping up. That's really sweet coming from Bakugo. Young Bakugo's being considerate in his own special way. Right, right. I'm dead serious, you idiot, and that dumb look on your face pisses me off! That's so or sweet. Not. No, all I hear is love. I feel like everything is connected somehow. They're really getting at this idea, yeah, but what is it? You should be thankful that your young body heals so quickly. And that skin, so supple. But her heart and mind don't heal quite as quickly. She's sensitive, Momo. Speaking of these kids being really great at interpreting events in a way that's positive for them, Momo, I feel, is one of those ones who's always kind of on the edge, and it's very relatable. She has that tendency of interpreting defeat as, like, endemic to something about her. What makes it so tough is that it just feels so real when you have those thoughts. Your brain has a way of taking deeply emotional things and framing them to yourself as logic. And it's for very good reason. I mean, these things are key to our survival, or at least were at some point in our evolutionary history. Like, you don't want to put yourself in situations where you're not adept because you'll die. But it has real harm in a life, let's say, that's, you know, mostly devoid of immediate personal danger for this kind of failure and ends up doing more harm than good if for someone like Momo they end up spending all their energy ruminating on this and perhaps not even trying anymore because of the conclusions they've come to or the pain they experience from failure. You know, and there's also a big problem of not understanding the role of time, especially when you're young. I mean, she can fail a thousand times. I mean, maybe it's necessary for her to fail like this a thousand times, but she's got so much potential. Everyone can see that, not least of all Todoroki. And that's the focus, right? The focus isn't the the moment or some kind of like self berating label that follows you around like a like a cloud. It's the goal and the process and then you know patience towards that. But Momo is just such a sponge for this kind of thing that it's just going to take a lot of energy and, and reprogramming and resisting her own thoughts even, her own way of conceptualizing herself in the world to kind of remove this obstacle and get out of her own way. Though I do feel like if I have to guess what's coming next, she's going to rebound quicker each time. Because once you, you know, you go through the process and you realize that those thoughts or whatever don't have to stop me, or you just keep going and prove to yourself through different results that failure is not like a destiny kind of thing or whatever, that gives you the ability then to question those thoughts for the first time. And from there, this guy's the limit. I mean, you're only what you are at any given moment and every given opportunity. The third match will take place in an area two blocks east of where the previous rounds were held. The cages have been moved to your new bases. I feel like they could benefit from referees. They wouldn't need cages. Solid all-around teams. Talk about a balanced team. Lucky draws. Yeah, got yeah. Todoroki, though it should be an easy win. That was my first thought, too, but you never know. Yeah. And they got Pony Girl, sort of a... A wild card, never know what she's up to. Pony Girl's a wild one. Yes, I took the prescribed medication. I will endure. Glad to hear. She really took that near-death experience like a champ. Speaking of staring into the abyss. Hawks and Endeavor. We studied under the heroes who fought the last great battle still in people's minds. That True. makes it our duty to uphold the honor of the top two heroes. Man, speaking of taking responsibility for stuff. I'll go 
I is this gonna be a fire moment for Todoroki? It's a, a skill he hasn't practiced all that much yet. A lot of room to grow there. You must learn this move if you're to advance. Do not run from me. That, that is where this is going, isn't it? Toya had the potential. The older brother. What happened to him? You're the only one who can do this move. You can fulfill my ambition. <laughs> there is a move coming. There's a big move coming. That's another another huge mistake I never made among just you know a lot of them. And unfortunately, a very common mistake that you see where people put their own hopes and dreams in their children. It's so unsatisfying. Even more broadly than parent child. People do this all the time. You know, people have desires and they push other people into those things. Even in the form of like advice, you know, telling people what they should do or telling people what they should be. A lot of that just ends up being weird reflections of one's own anxiety about life. It's just way, way more satisfying to see people see what they want and then just to do it. There's a world in which Todoroki succeeds in Endeavor as a proud parent, but that's not the world he was building there, right? That's his own shame and fear. When you do what Endeavor has just done, you know, like accomplish a big dream of your own, you don't care as much what other people are doing. You become way more tolerant of the way people live their lives because you are at peace about the way you're living yours. Once you sort of discover your own path, I think the desire shifts from wanting people to do specific things that, you know, you hope will, will validate your worldview into just wanting people to find their path, which is just a very general thing and can take so many different shapes and forms. It's probably no accident that by Endeavor doing this grand thing, he, he can now become a better parent. He can like separate a little bit from his kids being exactly, you know, what he wants them to be, which is what he wanted to be. He can probably see them for the first time in a way he never could before. Todoroki? Is there something wrong? You that being said... A look on your face. Oh, really? It's true. Something similar applies to Todoroki, where... You know, he can free up some of that baggage as well. I am class representative. I must aid any of our troubled peers. Yuna hasn't gotten enough spotlight recently. You know, I Speaking of like a look back, it just continues. Here. This feels like a sort of character consolidation and reflection, this whole thing. I'll show everybody that I'm a worthy successor. He just wrote a lot too, speaking of growth. We'll have to level this place! <laughs> Terrible idea! Mr. Vlad said to keep damage to a minimum! <laughs> Might as well lean into it if you're gonna do it. Oh, that's sort of awesome. Real steel. It's a fight to the death, a bra for the ages! Hold on! He brings the intensity at least. He's like a, just a fun person to have on your team. Time to make our class proud. Let's go, Team 3! We're already proud. We're already proud. We never weren't proud of you Gita. You're the best. You're okay too. <laughs> <laughs> the villain is continuing to flee down Route 5. What is what is going on in the meantime? Endeavor! Back to work! Endeavor! <laughs> he just leaves. Let go of me! I'm afraid I can't do that! After watching Endeavor's attacks on TV against that Nomu, there's just no way I would resist anything he, he told me to do. Excuse me. He can like destroy you with fingertip what blasts. Is it? We just wanted to say thank you. Building that fan base. Let's be off then. Bye. That was somewhat softer than usual. He didn't slap anything under their hands. Shoto, there's something I want to tell you once more. So stop Lots of unread messages. messages. Yeah. I'm not the same person who disregarded what you wanted in life. He's got to give it time. He's just got to give it time. Shoto's open. But you got to work for I it. I want to teach you that move, like a good father. Shoto! His kid's probably in class, right? It feels like all the Shoto shouting is getting worse by the day. I mean, it's not Endeavor if he's not overly fixated on something. It is interesting to me how the same thing, you know, the same action or desire can be totally different depending on what is the underlying motivation. Although this is still him wanting to teach Todoroki this move, my gut sense is that it's actually aligned to wanting to provide for Shoto rather than holding him to his insane expectations and seeing him as a, an extension of his own self-validation. And so you would imagine an effect of that would be that he wouldn't throw away things of greater value, which would be his relationship or his just general human decency towards his children, for something of lesser value, which would be like a power. Make it count, Todoroki. <laughs> this is the easiest victory. Easiest victory to call for Class 1A. Like, not only is his team stacked, but this is going to be a learning experience and a character growth episode for Todoroki. And also, these guys are just super unorganized, disorganized. And there he is. Super strong, I <laughs> so cool. He's just fun to watch. He has so much star power. This might be the first one episode <laughs> battle in this series. Come get some! What? <laughs> oh, he developed his powers. Class B, Juzo Honanuki. 
Hero name, Mudman. Mudman. A fast reaction. I'll retreat for now and wait for- <laughs> Oh no. Ojiro! Caught again? This is completely a maladies, Ida. This is also one with high potential to kill. Are you trying to keep us from working as a team? Villain! Your wickedness knows no bounds! <laughs> Ida always taking the roleplay seriously. With his ice off the table, Todoroki is operating at half his power. Correct. Gee, I wonder Don't what's left in Todoroki's arsenal that he could use. Should I go to the front? Then there'd be no one to guard Shoji. You know what scouts. you must do. What? Oh, here's Pony Girl. Apparently, she can control up to four of them once they've shot off her head. She's pretty okay. particular about keeping them polished. She's got like a hawks like thing, except with horns. You are evil incarnate! <laughs> Sorry about it. Recipro has a time limit, right? He really, like, dug that one out of his deepest feelings. Ingenium will rush anywhere at any time. Oh my god. That's what these legs are for. They won't be constrained! Show him, Ida. New style! Recipro Turbo! Nice. Is this what he was telling them? Congrats on getting your provisional license, little bro. And here you thought this was going to be a Todoroki Shine episode. No. It's Ida. Training is good, but you can also pull your mufflers out. Do it right, and parts that can take more of a beating will grow back in their place. Oh, that's, that's sort of dark. You gotta inflict pain on yourself. And it takes a lot of dedication. Ah, why did that hurt so bad to watch? For ten minutes! Nobody can stop me! <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, what? That's it? Damn. Love you, Ida. You're the man. There's something a little bit weird about the fact that inflicting physical pain on himself is a, a key to his growth. Just in a in a world of people who are who are just so so dedicated and fixated on success. I'm just imagining Ida like ripping his legs apart every five minutes. But that weird imagery aside, and again on the note of this being sort of a reflection on the series so far, Ida is one of the characters whose whose growth I've appreciated the most. I think there hasn't been a lot of it recently, and I think part of that is because he he just grew a lot early on. But he started out, I think, as as being a character who was this archetype for just inherited things, you know, inherited responsibilities from his family and being very quick to prioritize rules, trying to play the role he was given. And he still is that, but it just feels so much more authentic now. Speaking of the same thing being totally different depending on what's underneath it, Ida feels very strong, very self-reliant, very self-directed. There's something really nice there. You know, like, this is actually something I struggled with for a long time being, I think, in many ways opposite to Ida, where I was sort of aware of this sort of like inheriting of role, you know, inheriting of responsibility, inheriting of societal values and things like that. And my really, really strong desire was to just absolutely reject it down to my very bones, let's say. And so some examples of what that looked like were me being disillusioned with school and dropping out and being just an ultra contrarian and not wanting to do anything people told me to do or never wanting to go in line with what prevailing viewpoints were. But eventually it, it dawned on me that there's a higher beauty to be found where you are both autonomous, free thinking, independent, yet find a way to take on the responsibility and take on the roles that you're given in a way that is fully realized, you know, fully self-realized as to what it means to you. So like back to those examples, better than taking on this outlook of seeing the limitations of the educational system, seeing the lies that are contained within, seeing the flaws in the life model we're handed of school, college, work, retire, and then choosing to drop out would have been seeing all those things yet crushing school. Right? Isn't that optimal? Why not? Like, why not use it to my advantage? If I'm really free, you know, if I'm really an independent thinker, there's a way to rise above it. There's a way to not be used as a tool of those things, but to switch it around where you fully understand what you are and who you are and your values, and then just make things work. Do things well. Why not? And that's sort of how I feel about Ida. You know, like, he is following a path that has been given to him, but he's no fool. You know, he's no robot. He knows exactly what it means to him. He knows exactly why he's doing it and he's gonna do it well. There's something really really admirable about that to me. So yeah, it wasn't one episode but I'll see you next time when Todoroki rises from a phoenix to illuminate the shadows of his own heart and I don't know, fire metaphors continue.